So here we are going to talk about the design of double lacing system. So let's look at the question, design a built up column with four angles. So design a built up column with four angles and the column is 12 meters long and supports a factored axial compressive load of 700 kilonewtons and the ends of the column are held in position and restrained against rotation. Remember this condition. The ends of the column are held in position and restrained against rotation. Design a suitable connecting system. Remember here they did not say whether it is a single lacing system or double lacing system. They just said design a suitable connecting system. So we have to identify which is the best suitable connecting system for this kind of problem. Okay. So before solving this one, let's try to understand how you are going to arrange these four angles. Right. So you have to design a built up column by using four angles. So how you are going to provide four angles? See the one possible way of providing four angles is one angle you can place in this way. The other angle can be placed in this way. Okay. And the other two angles can be placed in these directions. So this is the only possible way of arranging the angle sections. That means the four angle sections can be arranged only in this way. You don't find any other arrangement patterns. You might can say that uh, why can't we provide in this way? Right? Why, why can't we provide in this way? So this process goes wrong because you cannot attach the four angles by using the lacing system. Right? That becomes impossible task. So for that reason, what you're going to do is you're going to arrange the system in this possible way. This is the only possible way. Remember, whenever you find a problem related to four angles, so this is the only type of arrangement which you can do. Right? Again, here also, you cannot provide single lacing system. So you have to provide, it is mandatory to provide double lacing system. So when you have four angles, four angles which are given in the question, so you have to go for the double lacing system only, not for the single lacing system. Okay. You try to look at how to provide the single lacing system. You cannot provide actually, you cannot make the better efficient section if you try to provide single lacing system. So for that reason, I'm going to provide the double lacing system and the arrangement of angle sections will be in this way as you're seeing in the diagram. Okay. So let's uh, solve the problem. So before solving, let's write the given data. The given data is the length of the column is given as L equals to 12 meters, which you can make it into mm, that is 12,000 mm. Okay. And the factored axial compressive load, okay, the factored load, or you can make it as factored axial compressive load equals to 700 kilonewtons. And the end conditions are also given, that is, held in position and restrained against rotation. So held in position and restrained against rotation. So by using this condition, you're going to find out the value of K. Okay, anyways, let's uh, find out that value a little later. So here you need to find out the area required. So let's write that step first. So area required. So you don't know the area of the angle sections. You have to first Identify what is the type of the angle sections. ISA, some parameter. Is it 70 by 70 by 10 or some kind of things has to be identified now. So the properties of the angle section has to be identified. So how you are going to identify the properties of angle section is by finding out the area value. Now, how will you find out the area of the angle section? So the cross-sectional area required equals to. So let's write this statement. So cross-sectional area required, cross-sectional area required equals to, so how will you find here is the factored load, okay, the factored load upon the FCD value, that is compressive force or design compressive force. So how will you find out this FCD value? You don't know the value of FCD is not given in the question, right? You don't find the value of FCD. Now here you have to assume one thing. So when you are having four angles with a double lacing system, assume 
So here it is just an assumption part. Assume FCD equals to 168 newtons per mm square. This is the constant value. You can assume only this value for any of the double lacing system when four angles are given. But in single lesson system, we have assumed this 168 value as 150. If you refer to the problem, we have assumed it as 150. Here you can see. So design compressive stress is assumed as 150, right? So in double lesson system, you are going to assume this value as 168. So you can keep this value. So usually this value ranges between 160 to 170 Newtons per mm square. Okay, remember this condition. So if you are unable to remember this condition, then you can go with directly the value of FCD as 168 Newtons per mm square. So that will give the best possible section. If you take 168, that will be the most optimum or most economical section you're going to get. So that's the reason why I have considered the FCD value as 168. So therefore, area required equals to factored load is 700 kilonewtons, which I'm converting into newtons upon 168. So this will be approximately yielding to 4166.7 mm square. Remember, this is the area of the four angles, right? 4166.7 is the area of four angles. Why four angles? Because you're going to provide four angles here. That is what the question said. So you design a built up column with four angles, right? So by using that, you're going to find out the value of area of one angle. So area of one angle section equals to, so what is the area of one angle section? It will be total area divided by four. So you have four angle sections. So if you solve for this one, you will be getting the answer as double one four one point six mm square. Okay, double one four one point six mm square. Now, refer steel tables book okay refer steel tables book and find out an angle section and find out an angle section which has an area greater than or equals to double one four one point six mm square i will repeat the statement again refer the steel tables book and find out an angle section which has an area greater than or equals to double one four one point six mm square now here you might experience one doubt, sir, uh, the angle sections are classified into two types. One is the equal angle sections and the second one is unequal angle sections. It's completely up to you which angle section you want to select. Okay, there is no compulsion between you have to go for only equal angles or you have to go for only unequal angles. It's up to you. So many, uh, it, it depends on your condition, it, it depends on your criteria. So there is no compulsion between them. But for simplification purpose, let's take the value of equal angle sections. But again, there is no compulsion that I ha we have to choose only the equal angles. Just for the simplification purpose, I'm taking it as equal angle sections. You can also select unequal angle sections. There is no rule that way. So Procedure the, let us try the equal angle sections. Okay, so let us try equal angle sections now you you open the steel tables book and find out an equal angle section which has an area of greater than or equals to 1041.6 mm square so let me open the steel tables book so here you can see the steel tables book that is the first table talks about rolled steel equal angles so you open this table, that is table number one. So and find out is an angle section which has an area of 1041 mm square or greater than or equals to 1041. So here you can see, uh, yeah. So here you can see all these are equal angle sections only. And here you will have the area in square centimeters. Okay, so but you got the value as mm square that is 1041.6 mm square so if you want to convert 1041 into centimeter square it will be 10.41 okay so let's look at the steel tables and find out which has an area greater than 10.41 square centimeters so if please go to the 
section and find out which section is having the area which is greater than 10.41. So here you can see ISA 70 by 70 by 8. Okay, ISA 70 by 70 by 8 is having an area of 10.58, which is just greater than 10.41. Okay, let us not try to select this one. Okay, that will be a very close to the value which is obtained, right? So let us not try to, you can also select this one, but during some checks, you might get some difficulties. So for that reason, let us keep that value aside. And you can also select for the next sections where you can go for, uh, so here you can see, uh, you can also select ISA 90 by 90 by 6 mm, which is also just greater than 10.41. So you can select any section, but the only parameter is it should be greater than 10.41 square centimeter, which is our value. So you decide which section you want to select. So it's up to you which section you want to select. Let me know what is the type of the section which you wanted to select and we shall solve for the same uh, section only. So let us select 70, ISA 75 by 75 by eight, which is having an area of 11.38 square centimeters. Okay, so let us try for, so select ISA 75 by 75 by 8, okay, which has an area of, so what is the area of this section that is 75 by 75 by 8, it is 11.38, 11.38 square centimeters. That is double one three eight mm square. See, that is what the condition I have said. So whatever the section you are selecting, it must have an area greater than this value. That is 1041.6. So one zero double one three eight is actually greater than 1041.6. So you can select this section. Anyways, so let's write the sectional properties of this particular section. So the sectional properties of the sectional properties of ISA 75 by 75 by 8 are so let us, uh, I'll just ask the value, someone please unmute and let me respond for the value. So the area is 1138 mm square, this is fine. Can somebody tell what is the value of a CXX Anyway, CXX and CZZ, they both are same. So can somebody tell what is the value of CXX, CYY? 2.14. 2.14 centimeters. So let us make it as 21.4 mm. So let us keep the all values in mm only. And the other value is, let me know the value of RZZ, which is also equals to RYY. You will have RZZ and RYY as same value. Can somebody tell what is this value? The radius of gyration that is RZZ RYY. And similarly, let me also know the values of IZZ and IYY. They both have the same values if you refer the steel tables book. Can someone tell what is the value of RZZ? Sorry, here RX6 is equal to RYY. RX6 and RZZ, they both are same. That is what okay. I was telling. Yeah. Point R... sir. What is the value? 2.28 RXX is equal to RYY. 2.28, which is in centimeters, so I'm making it into mm. That is 22.8 mm. So can IXX somebody... is equal to IYY is equal to 50, oh. 59.0. 59.0 into 10 power 4 mm power 4. Remember here, the value of IXX and the value of IZZ is same. Right? So IZZ is also called as IXX. Suppose so you have this kind of axis. You can mention the horizontal axis as XX axis, or you can also mention it as ZZ axis. They both represent same. Only the YY axis will have the single notation. Okay, remember this thing. Don't confuse between IXX and IZZ. IXX or IZZ, they both are same. You don't need to confuse between these two values. Anyways, so these are the sectional properties. Therefore, no. Therefore, area of four angles provided 
equals to so what is the area of each angle it is double one three eight so therefore the area of four angles provided equals to four times of double one three eight so which will be giving you four double five two mm square four double five two mm square so this is the total area of the angle sections which you have provided what is the total area of the angle sections required right it was 4166.7 so this is greater than 4166.7 mm square which is safe okay so that's how the section has been selected right that is the first part so based on the area value you are obtaining some fcd value as 168 and by using this condition you are going to select the angle sections Again, in the selection of angle sections, you don't need to confuse. You can select either equal angle sections or unequal angle sections. It's completely up to you. Now, the second part is the spacing of angles. The spacing of angles. So here, let us consider S as the spacing between the angles. Let us consider capital S as spacing between angles right so this spacing has to be connected now i mean you have to find out the spacing value so before finding out the spacing values okay before finding out the spacing values what you have to assume here is let us assume okay the slenderness ratio value as 60 you don't know the value of slenderness ratio right so let us assume this value as slenderness ratio as 60. Remember, this is just an assumption. So assume lambda, that is slenderness ratio, equals to 60. So this is just an assumption. You can assume this value for any type of the problems related to double lacing. Therefore, effective slenderness ratio, that is lambda E, Remember, therefore, effective slenderness ratio lambda E equals to 1.05 times of slenderness ratio. So the same pattern we have followed in the first part, that is in the lacing part also. Right? If you remember, the slenderness ratio is taken as 1.05 times of, see here, the effective slenderness ratio equals to 1.05 times of slenderness ratio. But here, you have found out the value of lambda, right? Because you know the value of R maximum and all. But here, instead of finding out, you are just assuming it some value. Okay, you are assuming it as lambda equals to 60. So therefore, effective slenderness ratio equals to 1.05 times of 60. So which will be 63. So this is the effective slenderness ratio. Now, what you need to find out? You need to find out lambda equals... Lambda I'll assume this course. It is just an okay, sir, Yeah, fine. So we need to find out lambda equals to KL by R value. Right? This is what we have to find out. But what we know here, we know the value of lambda, which is also called as effective slenderness ratio, that is 63. And you also know the value of length, which is given in the question as 12 meters, but you don't know the value of K. K value you don't know. And you also don't know the value of R. Right. So ultimately, by using this formula, what you're going to find out is R value. Okay. You, re you need to find out the value of R. Right. But before finding out the value of R, you need the value of K. So in order to find out the value of K, you are given with a condition, which is the ends of the column are held in position and restrained against the rotation. So now open IS 800 2007 and you find out what, what will be the value of K when the end conditions are held in position and restrained against the rotation. So let us let me share the code book and then you can find out the value. So here you can see from table 11, you can find out the value of K. Now what does the question say? It says the ends of the column are held in position. That means the ends of the column are in position only and restrained against the rotation. So you don't find rotation at the ends of the column. Now, let's look at the condition here. 
see here in the first case that is one end is fixed and the other end is free you have certain amount of displacement at the other end but in the first end you don't find any displacement similarly you take any section okay you take any section except the last one the ends of the column are restrained against rotation if you observe the last part right so the ends of the both ends of the column are restrained against rotation that means the both ends are not getting rotated that means the rotation is not available here so for that reason you are going to take the k value as 0.65 l that is what our condition said so the ends of the column are restrained against rotation and they are also held in position so if both ends are fixed then you can say the column is a fixed position that means it doesn't change its position and also you don't find the rotation at the ends of the column so that is how you can identify the value of k which is 0.65 l okay so let me write that value here just give me a minute yeah so here you can see the value of k so how uh, how you are going to find out the value of k from table 11 of is 800 2007 k equals to 0.65 for both ends fixed okay for both ends fixed the value of k is 0.65 therefore kl equals to 0.65 times of what is the length it is given in the question as 12 meters so therefore 12000 mm okay so if you solve for this one you are going to get the answer of kl as 7800 mm so this is the value of kl now from this you need to find out the value of r so therefore lambda e equals to kl by r so what is the value of lambda e which is the effective slenderness ratio it is 1.0605 times of 60 which is 63 and the value of kl is 7800 divided by r so if you solve for this one the value of r is obtained as 123.8 mm so this is the value of r remember this is the process of finding out the value of r when you are using double lacing system so this should be the process you should, you don't need to change the process okay so follow the same process for double lacing design now here you also need to find out the moment of inertia values okay so you try to find out the moment of inertia how you are going to find out is there is a condition for this moment of inertia moment of inertia of given section or selected section required okay that is moment of inertia is denoted with i which is i required equals to a r square so this is the formula what is the total area of four angle sections it is 4188 you can check in the previous steps that is very initial steps and what is the value of r it is 123.8 mm so r square is 123.8 square so which will be the a moment of inertia required will be 6418.7 into 10 power 4 mm power 4 okay so this is the moment of inertia required for our section so let us find out the value of y bar i'll let you know what is that so moment of inertia i required equals to moment of inertia i provided so we have to equate these two conditions in order to find out the value of yes remember ultimately what we are going to find out is the value of spacing so how will you find out the value of spacing is you have a formula which is 2 into y bar plus cxx or czz so this is the formula to find out the value of spacing okay so everything whatever we have solved we have solved so far is to find out the value of y bar so if you find out the value of y bar then you can find out the spacing 
okay so this formula you keep it in mind i'll let you know in the next step i'll let you know this one so moment of inertia required the value obtained is 6418.7 into 10 power 4 now how will you find out the moment of inertia provided so that is you can find out in this way you are providing four angle sections right you are providing four angle sections what is the moment of inertia of our angle section that is iz you keep it that way plus area of four angle sections remember area of the four angle sections into y bar square this is the formula of i provided four times of moment of inertia of izz plus a y bar square okay so here 6418.7 into 10 power 4 equals to 4 times of izz what is the izz of our angle section it is 59.0 into 10 power 4 so 59.0 into 10 power 4 meanwhile uh, somebody try to solve and find out the value of y bar and what is the area of four angle sections you will find out the four angle sections area as 4 double five 2 mm square so that will be 4 double five 2 mm square into y bar square you don't know the value of y bar so let us keep the same value like that now somebody solve and let me know what is the value of y bar yeah so therefore the value of y bar equals to 123.79 mm okay so now we shall find out the value of spacing of angles spacing of angles capital s equals to so what is the formula it is two times of y bar plus c x x what is this y bar value you got it as two times of 123.79 and what is the value of c x x it is 21.4 mm okay so 21.4 mm so solve for the value and let me know what is the spacing value Two ninety point seven four mm. Okay, so now you need to find out the design compressive strength. So you have to provide the spacing of two ninety point seven four. So design compressive strength equals to design compressive strength that is PD equals to AE into FCD. What is the value of area of four angle sections? It is a four double five two. Four double five two. And what is the value of FCD which we have assumed? It is 168. So you try to solve for the value of a four double five two into 168 and let me know what is this value. So this value is 764.7 kilonewtons. 764.7 kilonewtons. I said in the beginning of the problem, whatever the value of PD you have calculated, that value must be greater than the factored load which is given in the question. So what is the factored load that is given in the question? It is given as 700 kilonewtons, right? The factored load given in the question is 700 kilonewtons. So this value is greater than 700 kilonewtons. So therefore it is safe. Okay, that means whatever the section which you have considered, that is ISA, some section you have considered, right? So that section, that is ISA 75 by 75 by 8, and the FCD value which you have assumed in the first step, they both are same. I mean, they both are safe. So that's how you are going to find out whether the value of FCD which you have assumed and the section which you have selected are safe or not. Okay, so try to take the value of FCD as 168. You will get the most probable safest values. Okay, instead of repeating the process again, if you get unsafe condition, try to get the value of FCD as 168. You will get uh, a good range of values within the safe system. Okay, so this is a second step. So the third step sir, is... Sir, FCD. So the next step, you can make it as the third step, which is the connecting system connecting system right 
So now here you are, you already got to know that we are going to provide the double lacing system. So providing providing double lacing system. So I said already why you are providing the double lacing system. So providing double lacing system with lacing flats with lacing flats. What do you mean by lacing flats? They are ISFs. What do you mean by ISF? It is Indian standard flats. Okay, that is what we have said in the single lacing system also. So with lacing flats at an angle of 45 degrees. Remember this angle is fixed, which is 45 degrees. Even in the single lacing system also, we have taken the same value. Okay. So at an angle of 45 degrees. So let's find out the spacing of lacing parts. So the spacing of lacing parts. So let us consider A1 as the spacing of lacing parts. So how will you find out the spacing of lacing parts is? So it can be written in this way. A1 equals to S, that is capital S, that is spacing of the angles, minus two times of gauze distance, minus two times of gauze distance into cot 45. Yeah, ATM card was... Okay, so A1 equals to S minus 2G into cot 45. This is the fixed formula. Now, in single lacing system, you assumed the gauze distance as 50 mm. Okay, this is what you have assumed. But in double lacing system, you assume the gauze distance as 45 mm. This is just an assumption. So in single lacing system, you have taken this value as 50 mm. And in double lacing system, you provide the gauze distance as 45 mm. Okay. So therefore, A1 equals to, what is the value of spacing? It is, mm, what is the value of spacing? Yeah, it is 290.74. So that is 290.74 minus two times of gauze distance is 45, which we have assumed into cot 45. So can somebody solve and let me know what is the value of A1? Okay. So let us provide the spacing of lacing bars as 200 mm. You can also say, you can also go for 210 mm also. You can also go for 205 mm also. It's up to you. So since 200 and 200.74 is almost close, I'm just making the spacing of the lacing bars as 200 mm. Now let's find out the value of A1 by R. Okay. Now here, here A1 by R. So when you are finding the A1 by R, you make it as RYY. A1 by RYY. What is the value of A1? It is the spacing of lacing bars, which is 200. And RYY, is the sectional property of the section, which is 22.8. RZZ and RYY, they both are same, which is 22.8. Okay, so find out that value, that is A1 by R value, which is 22.8. So let me know what is this value. And remember, this value must be less than 50. Can someone say what is this value? That is 200 by 22.8. 8.77. Eight point seven seven. So obviously it is less than fifty. Therefore it is safe. Okay. Anyways, so it also should satisfy another condition that is zero point seven times of effective slenderness ratio. Okay. Zero point seven times of effective slenderness ratio. What is this value? That is zero point seven times of the effective slenderness ratio is obtained as. 63. Okay, can you tell what is this value? 44.1. 44.1. So 44.1 is also less than 50. That means it is safe. Okay, safe. Now, in the next process, what you're going to find out is the transfer shear. Same as we calculated in the single lacing system. Transverse shear VT equals to it is 2.5% of axial factored load given in the question. That is 2.5% of 
axial load which will be 2.5 percent of uh, that means 2.5 percent you can make it as 2.5 by 100 into what is the axial factor factored load given in the question it is 700 kilonewton so i'm converting into newtons so therefore this value will be uh, it will be 17.5 okay 17.5 into 10 cube newtons okay this is the transverse shear now transverse shear in each plane this also we have solved in the single lacing system transverse shear in each plane equals to vt by n okay so here also the n value is assumed as 2 remember the n value is assumed as 2 what is n value it is the minimum number of double lacings so you are going to provide at least two lacing system in order to make the double lacing pattern right so this is how the pattern goes in this way right this is how the double lacing is so how many number of lacing systems are required at least the two lacing patterns are required so that's the reason why i'm taking it as two okay so it will be 17.5 into 10 cube upon two so this value will be 8.75 into 10 cube newtons okay now here you are providing the double lacing system okay so as double lacing is provided as double lacing is provided the compressive force the compressive force in lacing bar equals to in single lacing system the formula of compressive force in lacing bar is vt by n cosecant theta this is the formula in single lacing system but in double lacing system you will get half of vt by n into cosecant theta okay this this is the formula in double lacing system okay in single lacing system it is just vt by n into cosecant theta but in double lacing system it will be half of vt by n into cosecant theta that will be half of 8.75 into 10 cube 8.75 into 10 cube that is vt by n value which you have got here into cosecant theta that means cosecant times of 45 right so if you solve for this one you will be getting as 6.19 into 10 cube newtons so this is the transverse shear and also the compressive force in lacing part now here you need to find out the next step which is the selection of the lacing the fourth step you can make it as selection of lacing or lacing flat so remember in the selection of the lacing flat you need to find out the length width and thickness right these are the three parameters now how will you find out these three parameters now please try to open the single lacing system so in single lacing system what you have to done was minimum width of the lacing flat and the thickness of the lacing flat right so before finding out minimum width and thickness let us provide let us provide m20 bolts of grade 4.6 okay so therefore minimum width of lacing flat so please try to open the single lacing system it was three times the diameter of bolt it is the same condition here also that means three times of 20 so which will be 60 mm this is the minimum width of the lacing flat next the other condition is the thickness of the lacing flat so thickness of lacing flat equals to in the in the single lacing system it was 1 by 40 I'll, I'll just show you it was 1 by 40 the thickness of the lacing flat please check down uh, if you have got to yeah see the thickness of the lacing flat is 1 by 40 times of s plus 2z into cosecant theta but in double lacing system this value will get converted into 1 by 60 times of s minus 2z into cosecant theta 
So this is how the condition gets changed. Okay. So therefore, one by sixty into what is the value of spacing? It was two ninety point seven four. Two ninety point seven four minus two times of Gauss distance, which we have assumed as forty five into cosecant theta value is forty five degrees because you are providing the lacing bars at an angle of forty five degrees. Now, can somebody solve and let me know what is the thickness of the lacing system? So here the thickness of the lacing flat is four point seven three mm. But remember, the thickness of the lacing flat should be at least eight mm. A minimum of eight mm should be there for the thickness of the lacing flat. Remember this value. So the thickness of the lacing flat should be at least eight mm. So therefore, I am providing the thickness of the lacing flat as eight mm. Remember, don't take it as six mm value. Okay. The minimum thickness of the lacing flat should be eight mm. So even if you get 4.73 mm, you try to provide 8 mm thickness only. Therefore, provide ISF, right? What is the thickness of uh, what is the width of the lacing flat? That is 60 ISF 8. That means 60 represents width of the lacing flat, and 8 represents thickness of the lacing flat. So provide ISF 60 A ISF 8 flat section. the next step which you can uh, which you are going to solve is you need to find out the value of minimum radius of gyration so let's find out the minimum radius of gyration minimum radius of gyration so you know the formula for minimum radius of gyration that is you know lambda equals to kl by r minimum right so but if you use this formula you are unable to find out the value of r minimum so ultimately what you are going to find out is r minimum only but here you don't know the slenderness ratio value and you also don't know the value of k right since this formula you cannot use there is an another method to find out the minimum radius of gyration which is t by root 12 and this is the same formula which we have used in the single lacing system also so if you go back and refer the single lacing system problem so this is the same formula which we have used where t is the thickness okay so what is the thickness of the section which we have selected that means the thickness of the flat okay here t is the thickness of the flat which is 8 mm upon root 12 so this will give you 2.31 mm so this is the minimum radius of gyration from this you can find out the value of slenderness ratio so the slenderness ratio can be found out in this way slenderness ratio that is l1 by r equals to okay l1 by r equals to 0.7 times of 0.7 times of spacing between the angles that is s minus 2 times of gauss distance into cosecant 45 upon the r minimum value So this is the fixed formula to find out the slenderness ratio. So remember here you cannot use the value of KL by R minimum. However, this formula is also directly related to KL by R minimum. But here what we are doing is instead of K, what I am going to take is I am taking it as zero point seven. Okay. So you can use this formula to find out the slenderness ratio value, which if you need to solve this one, that is point seven times of the spacing value which we have obtained is. Two ninety point seven four mm. So two ninety point seven four mm minus two times of Gauss distance. So the Gauss distance which we have assumed is forty five times of cosecant forty five. So here you can say instead of cosecant forty five, you can make it as cosecant theta. And however, theta value is forty five degrees upon r minimum. So R minimum we have solved it here, which is two thirty one mm. So if you solve for this one, this value will be eighty five point seven. So approximately eighty five point seven. It will be more or less this one. And remember, this value must be less than a value which is forty one forty five. So this is the fixed value. So this value that is L one by R value. 
must be less than 145. This is the fixed value. Okay. So since it is less than 40, 145, it is considered as safe. Now, ultimately, what you're going to find out is you're going to find out the design compressive strength, that is PD. You know the formula of PD, which is AE into FCD, where FCD is design compressive stress. Now, here, you know the value of area, okay? And you need to find out the value of FCD now, that is design compressive stress. And how will you find out this FCD value? Now, here. Here you can, you have the value of for L1 by R equals to 85.7, okay, that is lambda equals to 85.7, you need to find out the value of FCD. Now, how will you find out the value of FCD? In order to find out the value of FCD, you need these parameters. The first parameter is you need to know the buckling class, okay, you need to know the buckling class of the section which you have selected okay and the second parameter is by using the tables 9a 9b 9c or 9d so you should use any one of these tables based on the buckling class and then you you have to interpolate and obtain the value of fcd and that's the process of solving fcd now here you have selected a section which is called as an angle section that is what they have said so design a built-up column with four angles. And if you refer table 10 of IS 800 2007, you will get to know the angle sections belongs to buckling class C, right? So please refer table 10 of IS 800 2007, you'll get to know the angle sections belongs to buckling class C. Okay, so since the angle sections belongs to buckling class C, you're going to use table 9C of IS 800-2007. Suppose if the buckling class belongs to A, okay, then you have to use table 9A to find out the value of FCD. If the buckling class is B, then you have to use table 9B in order to find out the value of FC, FCD. If the buckling class is D, then you have to use table 9D in order to find out the value of FCD. Okay, so that's how the values of FCD has to be calculated. Anyways, so since our section, that is angle section belongs to buckling class C, you need to find out the value of FCD by using table 9C. So therefore, from table 9C of IS 800-2007, Okay, from table 9C of IS 800-2007, you need to find out when lambda equals to 85.7. Lambda is nothing but L1 by R or L by R. So when lambda equals to 85.7, you need to find out the value of FCD. Now, I want you to open the values of, uh, open the IS 800-2007 and refer table 9C and find out the value of FCD when lambda equals to 85.7. So let me share the code book so that you can uh, see. So meanwhile, if you have the code book, please open the code book and check it out. So this is how you are going to find out the value of FCD by using table 9C. So therefore, the design compressive strength, design compressive strength, PD, equals to AE into FCD. What is AE value? Here you can check down. So it is approximately, I mean, not approximately, the exact value only. Okay, so here AE is nothing but area of the flat and the dimensions of the flat, you know, which is 60 ISF 8, right? Where 60 is the width and 8 is the thickness. So therefore, AE will become 60 times of 8, 60 times of 8 into FCD, where FCD is 127.4. So if you solve for this one, you will be getting the answer as 61.1 kilonewtons. And remember, this value must be greater than 
the value which is obtained in compressive force in lacing bar remember pd value must be greater than the compressive force in lacing bar so let's look at what is the compressive force in lacing bar so here you can see so the compressive force in lacing bar is 6.19 kilonewtons so here it is in newtons so you can convert that into kilonewtons so here the condition is getting satisfied which is 6.19 kilonewtons what is the 6.19 it is compressive force in lacing bar compressive force in lacing bar so this is how you are going to find out the design compressive stress so which is again the safe condition so now what you have to do is you have to find out the tensile strength of the lacing flat okay so tensile strength of lacing flat so this step we have done in the single lacing system as well so the same process will be repeated again so you are going to find out two different values one is tdg which is gross yielding and the second one is tdn which is net section rupture so you know the value formula of tdg which is ag into fy by gamma m not okay where ag is the gross area of the flat what is the gross area of the flat it is 60 mm width and 8 mm thickness into 250 which is the fy value upon gamma m not which is 1.1 so if you solve for this one you will be getting the answer as 109.9 kN and similarly you also have to find out the value of tdn which is the formula is 0.9 an into fu by gamma ml where the formula of an is b minus n d not into t into fu divided by gamma ml so now here you know all the values and remember the value of n has to be taken as 1 because you need at least one bolt to provide the connection right so you don't know how many number of bolts are to be provided but at least one bolt is required for the connection so therefore i am taking the value of n as 1 so before taking the value of n as 1 the value of b is the width of the flat section which is 60 minus 1 that is number of bolts are 1 into d not so what is the diameter of the bolt you have assumed you are assuming m20 bolts so therefore the diameter of bolt hole will be 22 mm into the thickness of the flat section what is the thickness of the flat section it is 8 mm so times of 410 upon 1.25 which is gamma ml value so if you solve for this one you will be getting the answer as 89.74 kN so here you remember you cannot find out the value of block shear failure which is tdb right so in order to find out the block shear failure you need four different conditions that is avg avn atg and atn right since these parameters are impossible to find out for this kind of problem you are not going to find out the values of tdb which is block shear so therefore design tensile strength okay so therefore design tensile strength so what is the design tensile strength it is the least of tdg and tdn so therefore the design tensile strength is 89.74 kN so this is the tensile strength which is able to carry by the lacing flat so that's how you are going to find out the tensile strength and the last step which you are going to solve is the connections so you can make it as fourth step Uh, sorry this you can make it as fourth step and this one you can make it as fifth one so connections so how will you do the connections it is based on number of bolts number of bolts n equals to factored load by bolt value how will you find out the bolt value you are going to find out vdsb and vdpb so by using vdsb and vdpb you are getting the bolt value so bolt value is the least of 
strength in shear and strength in bearing so let's find out those values now so the first one is vdsp which is design strength in shear so vdsp equals to you know the formula that is f u b by root 3 nn a n b plus ns asb into 1 by gamma mb right i'm directly writing the value here so here for four angle sections you are going to take it as a double shear okay you are going to assume it as a double no it is not an assumption you are going to take it as a double shear and here the value of nn is taken as 1 and the value of ns is taken as 0 okay so if you solve for this one you will be getting the answer as 90.5 kilonewtons so you can solve for this later and remember the grade of the bolt is taken as 4.6 and the diameter of the bolt is taken as 20 mm that is m20 bolts of grade 4.6 okay so this is how you're going to find out the value of vdsp and the next parameter is vdpb which is strength in bearing so you know the value of vdpb equals to vnpb by gamma mb where vnpb equals to 2.5 kb d T into FU upon 1 by gamma MB. And now here you need to focus on 6, I mean, the thickness. So here in our problem, the thickness is thickness of the angle section. Remember, T is the thickness of the angle section. What is the thickness of the angle section which we have selected? So it is 8 mm. So here you can see. The sectional properties of ISA 75 by 75 by 8, where 8 represents the thickness. So remember here the thickness has to be taken as thickness of the angle section which you have selected, not the thickness of the flat. Okay. So therefore, 2.5, you can solve for the value of KB. So 2.5 KB, D is the diameter of the bolt, which is 20, and T is the thickness of the angle section, which is 8 and FQ value is 410 upon 1 by gamma MB. Okay, so if you, you can solve for this one, I mean, you find out the value of KB and uh, you also find out the value of VDPB. So however, the bolt value, okay, so the bolt value will, be, will always be this one only, that is VDSB value only. You can also check that later. So you find this value of VDPB and you have to take, remember the bolt value is actually the least of VDSP and VDPB. Remember this thing, it is not directly 90.5. You have to solve for VDPB also. But if you solve for VDPB, then you will get to know which is the least value. However, the least value will be VDSB only. So the bolt value is 90.5 kilonewtons. Okay. So therefore, number of bolts required, that is N equals to factored load by bolt value. Now here, one thing which you have to remember is when you are designing the double lacing system, remember, when you are designing the double lacing system, you cannot take the factored load which is given in the question. Okay, Remember, you should not take the value of 700 kilonewtons as the factored load. Don't take this one. So there is an another process to find out the value of factored load. I'll let you know that. So therefore, factored load. So how will you find out this factored load is? It is two times of, okay, it is two times of compressive force in lacing bar. Remember, it is two times of compressive force in lacing bar upon, it is two times of compressive force in lacing bar into caught 45 degrees upon the value of bolt value. Remember, this is the formula which you have to use to find out the number of bolts in double lacing system. Okay, remember this one. Don't directly take the factored load which is given in the question. So therefore, N equals to two times of the compressive force in lacing bar is 6.19 into caught 45 so here you can say instead of cot 45 degrees, you can take it as cot theta upon the bolt value, which is 90.5. So if you solve for this one, you will be getting approximately one bolt. 
so you'll get somewhere around 0 0.15 or 0 0.16 so therefore provide therefore provide one bolt of 20 mm diameter one bolt of 20 mm diameter at the ends of flat what is this and how you are going to provide this one so if you see from the front view they, it will be looking in this way so the lacings will go like this So please draw the diagram as well. So this is how it, it goes. So here the section continues, however, on the top and on the bottom, the section continues. So I'm just representing few things. Now here we have got to know that you have to provide one bolt of 20 mm diameter at the ends of the flat. That means to connect flat sections, you're going to provide one bolt. So where you're going to provide? You're going to provide wherever there are connections of two flats. That means, see, here you are going to provide one bolt. Here you are going to provide one bolt. So likewise, wherever you are finding two lacing systems getting intercepted, at those places you are going to provide. So here also you can provide the bolts. It is because this will continue in this way and this will also go in this way. So you can also provide at the ends because you have the continuous section. So that's how you're going to provide one bolt for each lacing at the ends of each lacing flag. So that's the concept of the design of the lacing system. Now we are due with one more thing, which is design of tie plates. The same thing which we have done in the single lacing system. Right, so you can make the sixth step as design of tie plate. And as I said earlier, tie plates are provided at each ends of the built up column. Remember, tie plates are provided. So tie plates are just supporting members. Okay, so tie plates are provided at each end of the built up column of the built up column sir yes so as i said earlier the tie plates are provided at each end of the built up column now here you have to find out the length of the tie plate the thickness of the tie plate the depth of the tie plate okay including the effective depth. So these are the four things which you have to find out. That is effective depth, overall depth, length, and thickness. So these are the four parameters which you have to find out for tie plates. So first let's find out the effective depth of tie plate. So effective depth of tie plate equals to, what is the effective depth of the tie plate? It is the spacing Okay, spacing minus two times of CXX. Spacing minus two times of CXX. We know the spacing value, which is 290.4, I think it is. Yeah, it is 290.74. And the value of CXX is 21.4. Okay, which we have wrote down in the very initial steps. 290.74 minus two times of CXX value is, so here you can see 21.4. So somebody solve and let me know what is the value of effective depth, 21.4. Let me know what is this value. And remember this value, okay? This value must be greater than 180. Okay, this value must be greater than 180. So can, can somebody solve and let me know what is this value? 247.94. 247.94. Okay, fine. So anyways, this is greater than 180. Now you might have a doubt that how did you get 180 mm? Now, so, or how did you get 180? 
so it is obtained in this way that is you have the angle section dimensions okay so if you refer the angle section okay the one which we have selected so it is 75 plus 75 and 75 right so one leg width is 75 and another leg width is also 75 right anyway sorry right it is 75 and 75 so for any angle sections remember for whatever is the dimension of the angle sections if you are going to find out the dimensions of the angle sections right so these things we have found out so here what you are going to consider is you have one leg width as 75 mm and you have the another leg width as 75 mm so which will be 150 mm right so most of the times the condition goes in this way so now we need to find out the overall depth of the tie plate overall depth of tie plate overall depth of the tie plate can be found out in this way that is capital d or small d anything is fine so d dash that is effective depth okay plus 2 into Okay, plus 2 into 1.5 times of D naught. Remember, D dash plus 2 into 1.5 times of D naught, where D dash value is 247.94 plus 2 into 1.5 times of D naught, where D naught is diameter of the bolt hole. Okay, so can somebody let me know what is this value? overall depth can someone solve and let me know so therefore the overall depth is 313.94 now the next parameter is length of tie plate length of tie plate now in order to find out the length of the tie plate let's look at what we have done in the single lacing system so you'll understand the process see here so the length of the tie plate is calculated as s plus 2 times of 90 okay so what is this 90 so here it will be the properties of the section okay let's look at this one just a minute So this is the formula to find out the value of length of the tie plate. So here the spacing value, you know, which is 290.74, okay, plus two times of leg width. What is the leg width of the angle section? Both the legs of the angle section are having same legs, same width. What is that? It is 75 mm, okay? So two times of 75. So if you solve for this one, you will be getting as 290 plus 150. What is this value? 290 plus, so it will be 440 mm. It will be 440 mm. So this is the length of the tie plate, which is required. Now you need to find out the thickness of the tie plate. Thickness of tie plate. So the thickness of the tie plate, Let's look at what we have solved in the single lacing system. See here you can see the thickness of the tie plate is taken as 1 by 50 times of S plus 2Z, right? The same formula you can use for double lacing system also. That is 1 by 50 times of 1 by 50 times of S plus 2Z. But here the gauze distance we have assumed as 45 mm. So therefore 1 by 50 into S is 290.74 plus 2 times of gauss distance, which is 45. So 7.6 mm. Okay. So you can take this, the thickness of the tie plate as 8 mm, or you can also go for 10 mm thickness. So it's up to you. Okay. So this is how you're going to find out the dimensions of the tie plate. So therefore, provide provide 440 by that is the length of the tie plate into 
the overall depth of the typewriter is 313. So you can make it as 320 mm. So for our convenience, you can make it as 320 mm. So therefore you can provide 440 by 320 by 8 mm size type plates. So where you're going to provide the type plates, you're providing one at each end. So that means, so since this section is continuing, you can provide the type plates here. Okay, this is the type plate. And for type plates also, you can calculate the number of bowls and all. But however, since to avoid the time consumption factor, you can provide three bowls. It is said that at least three bowls are required on each side of the type plate. So you can directly make this one. Or you can also solve. So to avoid all that uh, clumsiness and all, so you can directly take that, provide three bowls at each side of the type plate. Okay, therefore for, for one type plate, you need six bowls. So that's how the design process of double lacing system goes.